Hi, my name is EJ Bastian. I'm the Principal eDiscovery Program Manager in Microsoft's Litigation and Competition Law Group. So I manage the team of individuals who actually handle the technical aspects of discovery for our own active docket. We manage the preservation of content, we manage the processing of content, finding the relevant data set that we actually think should be reviewed for a case. We partner very tightly with outside counsel, so they're heavily involved in the process, but we're the hands getting the content to them. So at Microsoft, at any given time, we have about 850 cases on our docket, 850 cases for which we have active legal hold notices in effect, 850 cases for which we're maintaining in-place preservation policies to protect the content where it originates. The average case looks like this. 50 people have received legal hold notices. Across those 50 people, we're talking about two and a half terabytes of content per case. As we get to know the case and we work with outside counsel who have the greatest understanding of the needs of the case and the requirements of the discovery requests, we work to minimize the data in place so that we extract out only the relevant subset that we actually think merits review. So from those two and a half terabytes, we end up extracting the still significant 24 gigabytes that should be reviewed. Before we hand it off for review, we'll push it through Office 365 Advanced eDiscovery where we'll use machine learning and in-place analytics to deduplicate the data, to apply email threading, to group similar content, and get the data ready to be imported directly into a review tool um, where our outside counsel can make the most organized and efficient decisions on the documents that ultimately comprise our production set. So now let's take a look at the UI that we're using to actually do this work. All right, so here we are at the main e-discovery page of the Security and Compliance Center in Office 365. This is where all the e-discovery activity gets started. Everything's organized in the context of a case. So we can drill into these case objects and see what actually happens. So if I double click that test case, I can see the details of the case are shown. Right? I can see the number of holds that are applied, the number of sources that are on hold for the case, the number of searches that have been run for this case. On the holds tab, I can very quickly and easily create a hold policy associate the sources that are related to the custodians who received a legal hold notice for this case and apply in-place preservation in seconds. I can simply use the user interface to uh, pick the mailboxes and the URLs, whether there's SharePoint sites or OneDrive for Business sites that our custodians use, and then apply whatever conditions we might want to use to filter what gets held. So on the Searches tab, you can see all the searches that have been created for a particular case. The, the experience to create them is very similar to the hold experience, but you would go in, uh, choose which sources you want to search. They can be just the sources that are on hold, they can be the entirety of the tenant, they can be a subset, a custom subset of the sources that are already on hold or net new sources altogether. And you can paste in your queries using a keyword list to basically infer ORs between the lines of queries and this will uh, concatenate the terms together for you and run it all at once. After you create your searches, you can see the, the query statistics. Um, you can see the top locations that are generating the most volume for these searches. You can see what terms are generating the most volume. Um, being heavy PowerShell users ourselves, we've actually created some PowerShell scripts that help automate these processes for us and reduce the amount of manual work we're doing in the UIs. So instead of manually adding the sources, we actually use um, these scripts and do a lot of our work based off load files. So we'll start with a list of custodians, people who've received legal hold notices or people whose data sources we want to search. And we'll run one script that will ingest this list of, of custodians and find the sources that those custodians use and it'll append them back to that script, uh, that CSV, so it winds up looking more like this, right? We'll see the name and the personnel number, the GUID of the individuals, and then we'll see the mailbox they use, and the URL, and which teams and uh, Office 365 groups they're on, and what the corresponding mailboxes and team sites are. And then we'll append our queries to that and use it as a load file to automatically create the, uh, the hold object in the Security and Compliance Center for that case. After the search is run, we also have a script that synthesizes the data that's output and the query statistics and pairs it back to the list of sources on this spreadsheet so that we can generate, without any manual work whatsoever, 
a formatted spreadsheet that helps our attorneys understand the search results with more granularity. Right? It shows the uh, parent level items in volume per term. It gives the overall aggregate uh, results and the, calculates the call rate. It gives a breakdown by custodian, knowing that multiple sources uh, are associated with each custodian. And then it gives a per source summary showing what's being returned from the individual sources. And for the sources that are shared resources, like Office 365 teams and groups, it says which custodians have access to those. OK, so once we've found the search results that we actually want to export for review, we'll push them through advanced e-discovery so that we can um, apply in-place analytics, get more information about the content, and export just the unique and inclusive items that we actually want to have reviewed. Advanced eDiscovery will show us information about the content. It'll allow us to select the subset that we actually think merits review and format the content for direct ingestion for whatever review tool our attorneys want to use. All right, so every export from Advanced eDiscovery is formatted for direct ingestion into a dedicated review tool. So if you want to put this into Relativity, if you want to put this into Ringtail, it's uh, optimized for that. But it's, every export is also accompanied by an Excel spreadsheet that uh, can be used to organize and manage your, or help you manage your internal review of that data set if you don't want to use a third party review tool. So what I'm showing here is uh, an example of such an Excel spreadsheet. Every file um, in the export set is listed here with a direct link so you can um, open it with the click of a button. It'll launch the downloaded copy um, natively from here. Um, you can sort by file class, you can sort by custodian. You can also leverage um, native Excel features like slicers so that you can, with a click, focus in on the documents that relate to, say, a given custodian. Say we want to look at Alex Wilbur's data in this data set. So I can, with a click of the button on the slicer, see just the items that came from his sources. If I then also want to narrow in on the themes, I can filter by the dominant theme of the items. And let's say I only want to focus on Alex Wilbur's documents that relate to campaign or series. And I can see those items um, showing up here. Another commonly used filter on our team is the email sender domain, so we can see what are we receiving from uh, outside companies. It helps us organize our internal uh, reviews and streamline efforts so that we are less and less reliant on third-party technology and able to manage even more work without uh, per-use charges. So now that you've seen all that, I hope you're excited to check out the features yourselves firsthand in your own tenants. I also want to make you aware of a white paper we recently published where we talk in more depth about the features themselves and how we're using them on our own matters at Microsoft. Stay tuned because new functionality lights up regularly. Thanks so much for watching.